Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back with another list of modern boomer shooters. This is a genre of first person shooters I have been loving lately. And I know a lot of you are too, because my last video did extremely well. I wasn't sure if people would actually care about this, but it turns out a lot of people do. But I really shouldn't be surprised because this is a type of shooter that takes what was great about those late 80s and early 90s games. You know, they were easy to get into, they were fun, they were fast, and they're making new ones for a modern audience. Now, I know not everybody is crazy about the term boomer shooter, but honestly, I don't mind it at all. I feel like that you instantly know what these games are about. So without further ado, let's jump in and check out the eight boomer shooters that I think you should take a look at. The first one here is called Beyond Sunset, and I was so excited to check this one out. In my last video, a lot of people were like, dude, you've got to check this out because, you know, I love Doom, but I'm also a big fan of Cyberpunk and specifically Deus Ex and also a little bit of Shadow Warrior. This is a very story-driven game with lots of NPCs to meet and chat with. They'll offer you missions or give you clues as to where the story is or where you need to go next. Sometimes they'll even give you hints as to where little secrets are hidden throughout the game. And I have to admit that this game is pretty tough, especially in the beginning. I'm not gonna lie. There is a mandatory tutorial you'll need to go through to learn the basics, specifically of blocking bullets with your sword. That's pretty important because in the beginning of this game, that's all you got and you just need to try to survive. But not too long into it, you'll get guns and other weapons, which I feel makes the game a little bit easier. Also, be warned that this game is a little cheap with its enemies because often they'll warp into a level, sometimes right behind you, and then they'll come in waves. So you're never really sure when you've cleaned out a room until they actually just stop coming towards you. So that's a little frustrating, but also, you know, honestly, it's a little old school too, right? It's all about action and just getting in there, having fun, and be aware that there are multiple difficulty levels. So again, if you are struggling, especially in the beginning, no worries, you can play it on a beginner level. So like I said, Beyond Sunset is a really cool game. It's very fast, very furious. It's chaotic at times, but it's awesome. Here's another game that you guys all recommended for my last one, and that is Chop Goblins, a game with a very silly name. This game comes from the same developers that gave us the excellent Dusk shooter that I highlighted in my last video. What's cool about this game is that it's designed to be bite-sized. Basically, you can finish this game in about an hour, which is great because it only costs you $4 to buy it. And as you can see by these graphics, it is very much a PlayStation 1 era inspired retro shooter, and it's just a hoot. It's got five big sprawling levels to explore, plus there's multiple ways to navigate towards your objective. You're not locked into just one corridor. And there are lots of enemies to cut down. Now, one thing I thought was pretty funny is that these goblin enemies, they kind of sound a little bit like the Jawas from Star Wars, don't you think? What's fun about this game is it spans different time periods. So you go to ancient Greece, you'll go back to the 1800s in Transylvania, and you'll also be slightly in the future. For a game that's pretty short, they mix it up pretty well. And like I said, this is perfect for the busy gamer who only has a short amount of time to play a game. Maybe it's late at night and you've only just got like 30 minutes or so. And you don't necessarily want any fat or unnecessary story jammed into your game. You just wanna jump in and have a good time. Next up is the game Wizardom. This game definitely has that old school feeling with its 3D rendered environments, but also its flat 2D sprites. As you can see by this gameplay footage here, it's very fast, very fun, it feels really good to play. You can tell that the developers were probably inspired by some of the classics like Wolfenstein 3D, mixed in with a little might and magic, and maybe a little bit of blood and doom. There's also a lot of cool magical weapons to wield because again, you are a wizard and that really changes up the gameplay. 
I also love it when games have a lot of hidden secrets to discover in these kind of games where you push on a wall and it suddenly goes back and there's a bunch of treasure back there and maybe some armor upgrades. I appreciate how this game runs really well, even on medium spec hardware. I'm not running this on a high-end gaming PC. This is actually one of those little mini computers that are relatively inexpensive, like $300. And as you can see, it runs great. Oh yeah, baby, I'm really excited to talk about this game. It is Rise of the Triad Ludicrous Edition. This is an older game that was recently remastered by our friends over at Night Dive Studios. They're taking what was already a cult classic game from the 90s and then they update it and add 4K ultra wide display, higher frame rates, they added new levels and a ton more. And if you haven't played Rise of the Triad, the one thing that you're gonna know is that it looks and plays like no other game, specifically with its crazy level design. What I appreciate about this game is it doesn't really try to make any sense. Things float and move in really weird and unusual ways, but honestly, it doesn't matter because this game really just focuses on fun and exploration. And as you can see by this footage here, it is super fast, which I really like and I do feel like is important when you are talking about most boomer shooters. And there's just a great sense of humor with this game. As you see here, I pick up a drunk missile launcher, which is so much fun to use. And while I know that Rise of the Triad is not technically a new game, well, this is a new version of it. And I feel like Night Dive Studios brings enough features to it to you know, make it so it appeals to a modern audience. And so that's why I decided to include it. All right, now for something completely different. This is a game called Dead Link. This is a roguelike arena style shooter, but obviously, as you can see here, it has a cyberpunk graphical style. And as you can see by this footage, it's very modern looking. It's actually designed to, you know, play like a boomer shooter, but be very polished and modern looking like a, a brand new game. I really do love how vibrant everything looks here. This game has a really cool grappling mechanic that lets you zip across the map to an enemy or like even an object and then you can do a quick smash and grab or like a quick melee attack. That's definitely a move that you're gonna use all the time as you can see by this gameplay footage. And like so many of these other games, you have a bunch of different weapon types and upgrades. And because this is a roguelike, no two runs will be the same. Yet it will definitely keep you on your toes. And I have to say, I really appreciate how dense these levels are. There's no big open spaces here. Instead, as you can see, there's just lots of area to platform to, plus you can run and grab cover. It just, again, always keeps you on your toes. And yes, this game is very chaotic, but it doesn't feel too overwhelming because you always have so many things at your disposal. And like I said, those levels give you lots of room to maneuver and basically just keep running for safety. And you can probably tell by the footage, I would not consider myself an expert at this game, but from what I played, I absolutely love this game. And like I said, it looks like it easily could be a AAA release. And so, yeah, definitely check out Deadlink. All right, I like to mix things up. And this one, again, is gonna be completely different than the last one. It is called Impaler. And so this is another arena style shooter, but again, it's completely different than the last one. And it has a very unique premise. In addition to having a gun, you also have the ability to make these huge spikes to shoot out of the ground and like the title suggests, impale your enemies. And there are huge advantages to doing that. So basically enemies that get impaled will drop health and other collectibles, but you can also create temporary barriers within this, this big arena here and you don't take damage from the spikes that you put up. So you can actually use them to launch you in the air. 
And while you're flying through the air, well, you'll also deal damage when you drop down on an enemy from above, which is, again, a really cool feature of this first person shooter. And like so many of these other games, there is a big upgrade system that allows you to choose which ones you want to go into a level with. And as if the levels weren't chaotic enough, and then every once in a while, you'll see these big chalices or urns that will, will appear in the arena. Now, what you wanna do with these is you knock them into these goal areas, kind of almost like a soccer ball. And basically that will explode them and then you'll get random loot like health or you know uh, ammo upgrades, things like that. I became very addicted to this game and best of all, it typically only costs $3, yet because it's a roguelike, you can play this for hours and hours pretty much endlessly. So definitely check out Impaler if you're looking for something a little bit different, a little bit unique, and start climbing those leaderboards. Next up is another really cool remaster, again, from Night Dive Studios. That, of course, is Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion Remastered. This is yet another classic first-person shooter game that is getting the 4K resolution treatment. Plus, you can play this game up to 120 frames per second, as well as some nice graphical enhancements like better real-time lighting and textures, things like that. And I have to admit, this game is really fun. This actually might be my favorite game of this entire video. Again, I'm blown away by this game. It really reminds me of the original Half-Life, especially in terms of its graphics, but also its characters, its story, its level design. I just wouldn't be surprised if that's what they were going for here because I'm definitely getting that vibe. A thing I really enjoy about this game is that it's pretty old school in that it doesn't necessarily hold your hand on where you need to go next. You end up kind of wandering around these levels, exploring and finding health and weapons and ammo in pretty unlikely places. And it's not too frustrating either. I always ended up where I needed to be for the story to continue. This is a fantastic game, and if you never played it on the N64, or maybe it's been a while, you should definitely check out the remastered version. Next up is a sequel to a game I talked about in my last video, and that is Forgive Me Father 2. I really enjoyed the first game, and the second one looks to just continue what made that game so memorable. These kind of play like a survival horror game where they're inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, but there's certainly more action, more boomer shooter than the average survival horror game. They're definitely faster and, again, just, just more pick up and play. As you can see here, it's a hand-drawn graphic style that they've enhanced a little bit since the original. It still has that comic book or graphic novel style artwork, which is very unique, but this time they've actually improved the sprites, the models, and also the lighting effects. And this game doesn't take very long to beat. You can usually finish it in about four hours for the main story. And again, I think that is a selling point for a lot of these boomer shooters. You really have two kinds. Like if you have the, the kind of boomer shooter that is a campaign, well, it's only gonna be about three to four hours long typically, which again is perfect for most people. But then you've got the arena style shooters or the roguelikes, and those are really cool because you can kind of play those forever. That's why I think a lot of developers and gamers alike have been really drawn to this genre and revived it in a modern way. But there's also a big appeal for how they play. That's why it's really fun for me to make these videos and share them with you because thankfully we're kind of going through a little bit of a, a renaissance here with these and just so many are coming out. They're really fun to play and check out. But I would love to know what boomer shooters you are playing or maybe some that you're looking forward to. Maybe they're coming out this year. Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, guys, I wanna thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing and take care.